Hello, friends. Welcome to the F Society IRC podcast, a Mr. Robot review show. I'm your host, Heroja Shai. Hello. Uh, this is Heroja Shai, the moderator of, your, of this channel. And this is F Society IRC podcast, a Mr. Robot review show. And this is the uh, theory episode, if you will. And I haven't done one this season because this season's just been so good and just so... And I have really no idea where the show's going, um, what, you know, what's, what's going to happen, what theories they are. Um, so I thought I should cover, like, really, like, some of the major theories that have been happening within the community within the last, oh, basically since the inception of the show. And, um... We'll see if any of them pay out. You know, R.I.P. The Plane Theory, which was the uh, theory we discussed last time in episode 410, Gone, which was the Darlene and, and uh, Dominique theory that the two of them were going to die in an air- airplane crash, which is a kind of a negative conclusion uh, instead of a positive one where they would like run away together and live happily ever after, which really didn't happen, but uh, one of them did leave in a plane and Fingers crossed, 411. <sighs> Dom doesn't die in the ocean in a plane crash or anything like that. But uh, just like fun theories that people have had for quite some time about this show. Some of them panned out. Some of them have kind of been close to the truth. Um, really, only one I can say is actually a, and I'll have a link in the show notes, says an actual like bona fide predictor, if you will, of something that actually happened on the show, which was the 71 buildings blowing up. But um, that goes to, uh, from the on pirate satellite, uh, Joseph Ho's theory that he had like maybe three or four episodes before that actually, that actual event happened. But these are some theories that people have been bantering around for a while now about the characters and what's going on in the show and what the end conclusion is. So, and I'll have a link in the show notes um, to all of this. So this post comes from, and it's, it's mostly is coming from Reddit. Um, user Tom BH about a month ago he did a summary of the major theories Uh, this is his little introduction paragraph Uh, there's obvious too many theories to list them all so let's focus on the ones that pertain to what I think we can all assume are the two main characters which is Elliot and White Rose any theory is valid for inclusion here no matter how many holes it has there's always something interesting in every theory I've read but perhaps limiting theories to only those that have been um, articulated through a self-post will help consolidate the diversity. I'll try to list them in order of their perceived popularity. And he lists uh, Elliot as the main character first. So, the third altar. So that's something that's been talked about for quite some time. So almost, I would say, the first season about, uh, the, the, and I've talked about the, the three faces of Elliot, that there is a third altar out there that we have not quite seen. So he breaks it down like the third altar is, and then there's the friend, us, or the friend that he talks to, the the audience, the mask, um, Sam Spiel, which is the uh, friend, childhood friend that Elliot has, and then the fake name he used uh, to get into Iron Mountain to do the to do the initial legwork for the hack for um, shutting down the E coin into that mountain, putting that Raspberry Pi. Um, Sam Ismail, the author, you know, the creator of the show, um, part of 13 altars, like he has, Elliot has a bunch of altars, and then Tyrell, which has been pretty much Nick's. Um, there's also a theory that Elliot has a brother who is either Tyrell or Fernando Vera. That theory has been pretty much Nick's now. Uh, there's Elliot is fully or partially an AI. We'll get into that. And significance to Mr. Robot with or without glasses, if that actually kind of matters. And the third altar wants to rule the world. So let's let's talk about um, the, the the third altar is. So <clears throat> this is posted by user Eureka Butthole. It's um, about a one month ago. So the the theory running now is that the mask Elliot, Sam Ismail, Elliot Prime, whoever you want to call him, is the third pers- personality in the strongest self. Uh, I think it's built in the show is very structured from the beginning. Elliot has did, which is uh, the disorder where he splits off the different personalities. 
uh, other versions himself. L8 has pain he can't deal with, uh, which we found the revelation in 407, what that is. And the strongest part of him, the other formulated a plan. Um, he raises pa his past trauma, which we know because he doesn't remember what happened to him as in his childhood from the revelations of 407, but also from season one where we have the revelation that he didn't remember his sister, um, certain parts of his life, like he edited out the, his memories from himself. Um, and that his personality from that dream sequence from season one, that he was only, the Elliot that we have been seeing is only a month old. Um, Uh, Angela says you were only born a month ago. It works on another level since it aired a month after the pilot. She also acknowledges his change in 108, saying he's been different recently, even before Shayla's death. Uh, it's like Clue as well. The other orchestrated that Elliot forgets Darlene, forgets Edward, numbs his pain with morphine so he can finally succeed. Uh, this personality then wakes up in Tyrell's car, and we still don't know what Elliot's other personality did on those three days. So yeah, we don't know what happened though, during those three days at all, and I'm not sure we're going to get any revelations on the, those three days from the, the first season, but maybe we will in these last three episodes. The same mass personality also says if you have any interest in recovering stolen or lost memories waking up from your slumber, uh, is that for the other personality show that Elliot we know what was subconsciously planned all along by, well, himself. Uh, Mr. Robot is there to guide the hack because the other knows Elliot needs the support due to their never coping with his father's death. We know that's more than just that. It's from this trauma. That's why Mr. Robot's there is to protect Elliot from the trauma that he suffered during childhood. Uh, Mr. Robot, Morphine, us, the audience, so many little management coping tools been in place to make sure that stages one, two, and three happen. Sometimes the narration is just coping mechanisms for Elliot to bounce off of, or as someone mentioned here, it's sometimes the other talking to Elliot. If the journal is to believe, that's the journal he had uh, in season two when he was in the prison, the world we know who Elliot is, we're about to see a personality that Tyrell called God take control. So that has been the pretty much the basic summation of the, the whole concept of Elliot Prime or uh, the original personality or Sam Ismail uh, or Sam Spiel's personality. Um, let's see. And I think up at this point with the meeting of the altars, the um, council of Elliot's, if you will, that we know that there's another personality within Elliot that we just have not quite seen yet and we don't know if and when it, that the manifestation is going to happen. Um, if we look at, so the Sam um, Ispo is the concept that the third personality is not really this childhood friend from Elliot, is actually Elliot's prime personality. So. This comes from two months ago by Madagas Mad Mads card. So I posted about the third altar a while back, but I think it's a good time to repost my theory uh, with what happened in last episode and all. Uh, here we go. Elliot's third altar is his childhood friend, Sam Ispel. I believe we have not seen him yet, and then we will get a flashback episode of the sequ sequencing, focusing on the relationship when they were kids. Uh, Sam died tragically when they were young, possibly killing himself and the death traumatized Elliot. I, I don't think that's the case now, but this is, a, you know, again, a theory that's been going around for a while. Um, let's see. Explains why Elliot threw himself out the window. We know that's not the truth, but a Elliot actually talks about Sam at the beginning of season two, episode 11. In middle school, I took a visual basic class. I remember my friend Sam telling me about a technique he used to induce lucid dreams so he can study in his sleep. This is why I said earlier that Sam was probably a very disturbed child. What kind of kid knows this stuff in middle school? Uh, the full name Sam Ispel is also used in season one, episode five, when Elliot infiltrates Steel Mountain. Okay, it's called Steel Mountain by passing as a billionaire. Whether Elliot actually lives a double life as a billionaire under the name of Sam Ispel, I don't know. The name Sam has been used twice in the show now. Of course, it could also just been Sam Ismail liking it his own name a little bit too much, and I might be reaching a tad. And then he goes, when I think Elliot acted as Sam, when he threw himself out the window, that's not true. When his dad died in the theater, I don't think that's true. When he trashed the server room at his old job, mm. when he freaked out at the Queen's Museum, when he insulted Bill at Still Mountain, and when he got out of Tyler's car and told him that he wasn't seeing what, he, what was above them. And during the three days after 5-9. 
In most of these events, Elliot was violent, cold, and manipulative, which makes me think that Vera might also be Elliot's third altar, but we're entering tenfold territory with that one. So, again, this is just, you know, certain aspects about the whole concept of Elliot having, you know, this altered personality, um, and his name is Sam Ispell. There's a few different variations of that. Um... I want to go into this one that's been around for a while where Elliot's fully or partially an AI. This is something that has to do tie in with the Washington Township machine where people think the, the, mach the machine is either creating clones, pulling people for alternate universes, or is an AI and everything that we're seeing is just this program running through to create something if you will. So. This comes from like literally like three years ago. So spoilers for season two, episode 12. This is from Dom, Dommy SDL. Looking at the AI transhumanism again after tonight's episode. Um, he says, I'm really on board with the AI related theory of tonight's episode. I've been perturbed by some things in the past episodes that didn't make sense with the narrative of the show, but they're starting to make perfect sense within the context of the theory. I did a search on AI theories and some of this is not going to be anything new, but I'm hoping to add a more developed theory and a new perspective from last couple episodes. I will also discuss how some of the stranger, inexplicable behaviors in the show might fit neatly with the theory. Tonight I'm essentially enthralled by a scene where Tyrell confronts Elliot with a gun and they're in their standoff that ends with Elliot getting shot. This is a very interesting monologue exchange that happens around 450. Elliot says he can't. He doesn't exist. Is I'm, I'm the only one that exists. It's time to finally take back control, real control. At this point, Tyrell shoots him. My theory, which is analogous to some other, some older threads and theories, is that Elliot is at least partially an AI that is implanted into a human body for something like a test drive or attempt to um, hyperize a strong artificial intelligence with a human being towards some kind of transhumanist end. It has limitations, as most people involved with AI ethics today agree early iterations should a common worry problems of the real world today is that a strong AI will break loose of the bonds program into it and become extremely dangerous and uncontrollable you know Skynet what we what we saw in this scene is the, sen the sentence realizing bondage another theme of the show and something become a real danger Tyrell shot it potentially with the implication that it would be more than just a provable system reboot so I propose that the show involves varying layers of conspiracy and storytelling above involved. Part of the story is about a machine, a super intelligence, trying to integrate into the world and into a human body. Presumably its creators have decided that being in the body is the best bet, perhaps to attempt machine kind moral slash ethical learning, perhaps is the only way that they figure out how to be able to shut it down if they need be. We view it as malfunctions and inadequacies of the integration through a variety of distortions and interesting perspectives. Mr. Robot, perhaps Ellie's real dad, pre-transhuman upgrade, perhaps not, acts as a sort of assist or override protection program and sentence to keep it on track. So we know what Mr. Robot's actual real purpose is. Uh, the theory kind of goes on, but I just want to kind of touch on it a little bit. Like there, there has been this concept that we're either An Angela, Darlene, and Elliot were taken as kids, especially with Darlene having been kidnapped as a child, tells that story to Cisco, and then been implanted with this, like a chip, or something like an AI type of a system and that's why they are the way they are and this is all like a big lab rat deal going on where you know White Rose or Ecoin or something to that extent are trying to create you know artificial intelligence. <clears throat> I don't think at this point that that is the case. I don't think we really know what <laughs> the full purpose of the Washington Township machine, but I think we are going to find out very, very soon. And then I found this it to be interesting. Um, like the third altar wants to rule the world. Like what is the full motivation of Elliot's third altar? Because one of the biggest things that I have kind of talked about in previous episodes is how is it that Elliot, one, didn't know that White Rose and Minister Zong were the same pe person, but two, didn't know about the Washington Township plant machine. Uh, he was so focused, you know, taking down Evil Corp and taking down the 1% that how did he not know this 
very thing that his father worked on, um, who we know is a very evil man, um, that he wasn't aware of this project. This project associated with Evil Corp, associated with White Rose, who all along has been his true nemesis, if you will, that like how was he not aware of it and was this all of this the end goal end goal was to destroy this machine this machine that um was created by his father you know um or at least partially created by his father as a way of i don't know destroying his father getting back at his father um maybe ending whatever evil project that is um i think we might get some flashbacks in the next couple episodes I might close or fill in some gaps like the three days of uh, Elliot went missing maybe his transformation from uh, the Elliot Prime if you will to the Elliot that we know but really that that safety deposit box that his mother had kept um, maybe there might have been the plans for the Washington Township plant in there and Elliot has it and maybe that's what started all of this um you know because i i don't think they don't mention things in this in this show and not address them in some fashion or some form it might not be in the way that we think but in some some manner they they bring it up like irvin writing a book right it was like kind of like a throwaway character thing about irvin and it gets published and you see it out in the world um like little tiny stuff like that i i think that it's going to come back about what was in that safety deposit box and it, it might have been the plans for the washington township plant machine or what its purpose is or maybe even how to take it down okay <clears throat> so this is by peter alexander 05 this is a theory that came out about a month ago one of the craziest theories i read is also the most realistic and like that I've seen so far. Full credit to isomorphic projection. Here's what his comment. Elliot's other alter has has known about the Deus group all along. They told Tyrell during the you're not seeing what's above you, God, Eagles, Deus group scene, and this has been their plan all along. Elfa, infiltrate the Deus group and bring them down, take their place and become gods, which is what Tyrell was referring to previously. Um, Uh, the first scene of the show establishes that Elliot does know about the Deus group, at least some form of fashion. The ones that play God without permission. This theory makes sense in that both the logical sense and that what would Sam as Mel do sense. The reason it hit me so hard was because it never made sense to me that Taro would want to take E Corp down unless he would gain power out of it. Which, again, that's some of the motivations about Tyro Wellick with that aspect didn't quite make sense. Uh, even without hindsight, the 5-9 hack was ever going to give Tyrell or Elliot any power once the hack was done. They just returned to their normal lives. Even taking E Corp down wouldn't have given Tyrell power. Tyrell always wanted power. So I guess many assume that it was due to him wanting revenge against Philip Price if after being fired. But this theory allows him to get revenge but still get what he wants. He wanted from the beginning was the popular belief of just wanting revenge these and powerless when it all said and done like yes he'll feel high and mighty after taking down e-corp but then what what does he get afterwards nothing and he certainly wouldn't become a god by doing it either i also agree that elliot is not the original personality but one created by the original which is why angela said you're only born a month ago but this makes per perfect sense control is truly an illusion just like when he did the five nine hack assuming that it would be this big world changing event and it kind of was it wasn't and arguably made things worse. Now he thinks getting rid of the Deus group would change things when in reality the third slash original personality plans to take the place of the gods. So this is about the motivation of like what the final purpose of the third personality. Like what is really the end goal? Because the 5-9 hack crashed the world economy and made things like shit. They reversed the hack and things have gone to some kind of similar place but people are still not better off and the people that control the puppet strings are still in place you take down the dexas group you've doxed them there'll be investigations maybe some people might go in jail or whatever but you haven't really changed the status quo yeah you took a quite a big chunk of their money some cases maybe wiped out a few of them out and dispersed it around the world and that might have some ripple effect of, of things 
But fundamentally, what has really kind of altered or changed in the status of the world? Um, so it goes to like, what is, what is this all about? Like, what really is Elliot trying to do? So um, ask yourself, what uh, Tyrell is a character more likely obsessed with taking down E Corp or taking down E Corp and replacing him, them giving him power he always wanted even beyond that. I truly believe that in order to get Tyrell to be obsessed with, obsessed with the plan as he is, it would be entitling, entailing him getting what he always wanted, which is power. Tyrell never showed any signs of having a sense of justice or being revolutionary. We're really supposed to believe just because he's obsessed with Elliot, he just be, because he wanted revenge over being fired. Plus, we sort of just brush off when Elliot, Tyrell says we're supposed to become gods together. It's just Tyrell being really poetic, as many characters on the show, but makes no sense looking back. Doing the 5-9 five five hack doesn't make Elliot or Tyrell become gods, more like heroes, at least from the standpoint of Elliot and Tyrell. If this theory is correct, then Lily, they literally would become gods. So it goes back to again to like basically the motivation here. And Tyrell did in fact, you know, kind of became kind of godlike. He, he was going to be the CEO, well he didn't realize this or know this, he, he was going to be the CEO of E Corp. He was going to be you know, in power. Uh, he did get that CTO position and he was miserable. He got what he, I guess you can say, he wanted with so many caveats and such a pressure cooker situation for him. Um, it's one of those be careful what you wish for thing. So the one thing I found prob problematic about this theory is how Elliot and Tyrell would replace a des des group of White Rose. As we've seen so far, Elliot has an answer for everything and has done some incredible things. So it really isn't a stretch that he could have something cooked up to get it done. Also, the theory lines with Vera wanted to rule New York. Just wait until he finds out the original Elliot wants to rule the world. Um, <clears throat> I'm sure the third personality will use Vera just like the DA used Leon. Um, that's not the case, so I'm going to kind of skip here. So Elliot wanted, season one, Elliot wanted to save the world. Whereas season four, Elliot, the third original slash personality, wants to rule the world. I could see the final season being Elliot killing himself to prevent the third original alter from completing his plan. And the last words we hear is, I wanted to rule the world. I've always thought the show would end on a moderate happy note, but with Elliot dying in the process. So, here it kind of s speaks to, you know the motivations of Elliot like what is the purpose of all of this and I think we're kind of coming to the end game here where we're kind of see like why are all these things happening what is what is the end goal what is White Rose's end goal you know um, is Elliot really trying to supplant the death group or is he trying to, to just really try to save the world. Let's see. Okay. So White Rose's project. Let's kind of get into her project here. Mind control. Um, I'm going to go with the alternate reality because I think that's the one that has the most meat. Uh, again, this is going to be a link in the show notes so you can peruse yourself about the artificial intelligence, mind control, and we'll talk about time travel. <laughs> So one of the biggest things that people have stated was that the Washington Township machine is a device that is an Einstein-Rosenberg bridge, a wormhole, basically. So season three, season ten, is episode ten is White Rose's project and Einstein-Rosen bridge, also referred to as sci-fi as, you know, a wormhole. So Mary and Marilyn, this is ten months ago, and this theory kind of gets some meat by B. Langerning. So I speculate there's a good chance that White Rose's project is some sort of stargate door through which one can access their overlapping map of universes slash consciousness slash reality. That sounds right to me. By distinguishing from stargate depiction of people stepping through a portal and physically going somewhere else, I think when we're headed in a situation that would be controlled not just by technology but by belief, it won't be a machine anyone can step through like a door. Um, Philip Price will forever be barred from traveling <laughs> while well, he's dead. And this meddling of science and faith is essentially a balance between opposites that is the heart of the show's philosophy. 
As someone like Elliot, who already par partially disbelieves his reality, is probably the ideal candidate to mentally travel to a different one. I assume this is part of the reason he's special, he's already part way there. But I think whatever hap happened in the WTP incident was perhaps an early success. White Rose attributed to Edward about maybe the success cracked open the door between adjacent timelines, enough for someone like Elliot to experience them without knowing. I agree that someone, Elliot, is a key. He describes it that way explicitly in season one. I think we kind of know what the key is now. I don't think his computational abilities, though. White Rose says she has the necessary tools to accomplish her mission. Somehow it's Elliot's rage that will open the door. I just don't understand the mechanisms in which his rage accomplishes it, that, though. The only thing I can think of is that White Rose is, is stoking Elliot's rage as a way to motiva motivate him to fully utilize his abilities he already has. We've seen him bend the world to his will. Maybe he just needs a reason to do that on a grander scale, like a super man turning back time. <clears throat> and then Mary and Marilyn kind of replied back to this. This is why I'm used when you get some headgear similar to what Dark Brown wears in the Back to Future movies, as well as the dream made in the Orient made just for your head statement which would be both campy and clever. There would probably be some sort of platform situation, but probably head care to amplify brainwaves or something, but stills involve access to the Stargate pro 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 portal. And it kind of goes a little bit more. So basically, the theory is the the Einstein-Rosenberg bridge is what White Rose is has built. And they're going to, she wants to travel to or send people to travel to these alternate worlds. And we know her motivation for that is because of her lover dying and living in a world where they, the two of them can be together. You know, she's there um, as her true self, he, and, you know, her lover's there as his true self, and they can live, you know, kind of a happy existence. Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure how much of that is going to be true, but this machine does something. I mean, it, it's, it can't be all crap, if you will. It can't be this big con that Philip... Um, has been saying about White Rose, about the machine, about what her motivations are and what she's doing. Like it's a it's a con job. But like I said, we're gonna kinda get answers to that. So there's that. There's that theory about, you know, accessing alternate realities. And then there's the one about time travel. So a grounded time travel theory comes from binary descent. Now there's other ones where it kind of operates like the Einstein-Rosenberg bridge where people are actually like back to the future, traveling back to time, whether it be their conscious or their their body. And this one is more of a conscious one, but <clears throat> I know this time travel theory has been kicking around, but I think maybe it might be grounded in reality. According to, um, these are some scientists, uh, Wheeler and Ho's theory that the, these singlets should have the ability to jump into an extra fifth dimension where they can move forward or back in time and appear in the future or past. So a signal can be sent back and forth through time. So one of the active things about the approach to time travel is that it avoids all the para big paradoxes. Because the time travel is limited to these special particles, it's not possible for a man to travel back in time and murder one of his parents before he was born, for example. However, if scientists can control the production of Higgs singlet, they might be able to send a message to the past and the future. So like a radio transmission or a message in a bottle, you just fling it, it goes to the, to the designated location, someone picks it up, opens it, and reads the message. White Rose could simply be planning to communicate with herself in the past via the machine and control Higgs signet particle. She will use the machine to hack time, which is something that White Rose has been very obsessed with. Elliot could hijack the machine and communicate with Edward as it involved with the project originally. Uh, White Rose has maintained a strict adherence to schedule, and the reason this could be would be to know exactly where she would be and what would be happening at any given moment in her timeline. So she, this has already happened. So she already has a plan. Like. She accomplished the task of building the machine and sending the message, and we're seeing her fulfilling what that message is being done. That's why she needs to get the project to the Congo to reassemble it and, and, and again, send the message back to make sure that all this is going to happen. Um, it's interesting because the Vanderbilt name was very prominent in the train station. So that's, that's one theory, the whole concept of time travel. So... <clears throat> B-Wanger, 
uh, shows up again about this time travel thing on the subject of White Rose. This comes from a year ago by One True Mod. Aside from White Rose's obsession with time, I say most of the evidence we have suggested that, that White Rose thinks she can somehow shift between alternate realities. She tells Dom she thinks it's an alternate reality playing out a scenario where 5-9 didn't happen. Uh, the scientist at the WTP says he imagines not only alternative realities, but that our mental states might be conjoined among these realities. White Rose tells Angela that she can have what she wanted by force of will, perhaps suggesting she can shift our mental state from one reality to another. And White Rose tells Grant, when our project is done, I will find you. Finding someone is different than either bringing them back or making it so that they didn't die in the first place. If White Rose is serious about finding Grant, then she's suggesting death isn't an end for him. She he still exists somewhere, and White Rose just needs to find him. The alternate reality is a real scenario the show seems to be laying out actually has some of the same features as time travel, but none of the troubles and paradox. If possible, the world that can exist does exist, and we can shift our mental states from one to the next by force or will. We can choose to live in any world that's physically possible. If you don't like the current reality because your mother died young, Angela or your father, Elliot, did some horrible stuff, you can simply live in a reality where those things didn't happen. You don't go back in time and fix the problem, you just choose a timeline where the problem never materializes. So there's time travel slash alternative reality concept there. So I thought, you know, it'd be just kind of fun to bring these out there to see how much weight can be given to these theories how much of them are crap or we just we just are not gonna know or we're gonna get some kind of way different answers that no one had perceived or conceived but upon maybe re-watching the series you're gonna go oh okay that's what that means that's what this means that's why this is happening and build off of and, and stuff like that you know like I said in the previous episode I think these fan theories are fun they're fun for me um, I like some of them to happen but some if they don't happen it's it's not too upsetting for me personally I think it's just a great way to interact with other fans um, but as far as um, the show itself I just you know whatever happens happens and uh, I think I'm gonna be fairly satisfied uh, with what's going to happen with the show. Uh, so I'm going to end this with why White Rose has let Elliot have so much rope for so long. I, I think that needs to be um, answered, given what her position is right now, of being on the run, being one of the most wanted people in the world right now, um, the collapse of the Dix group, the loss of funds, and her project has not quite shipped out yet. So it's still in danger it's still a threat so it'll be interesting to see what will happen so that's it for this it's just a summation of some of the big theories out there you have the ai the third personality alter its motivation does it want to rule the world um time travel i, I think those are the pretty big ones that everyone has that are kind of left for the show So my name is Heroja Scheib. Uh, you have been filled in, I guess you can say. Uh, I'm closing this channel. Uh, this is F Society ROC Podcast. And until next time, friends.